We've seen that complete occlusion of a coronary arterial vessel renders the entire thickness of the myocardial wall it supplies at risk of infarction and manifests as ST elevation on the ECG. In the absence of treatment, the process may progress to complete transmural infarction of the area involved with development of pathological Q waves. In contrast, partial occlusion of a coronary arterial vessel results in an incomplete reduction of arterial supply to a region of myocardium. Ischemia in the area supplied by the partially occluded vessel, illustrated here in the lateral wall of the left ventricle, is primarily targeted on the subendocardial aspect of the affected region. In the great majority of these cases, this does not result in ST segment elevation on the ECG. Myocardial ischemia secondary to partial occlusion of a coronary arterial vessel manifests on the ECG in a number of different ways. Rarely, but importantly, the ECG may remain normal, at least for a time. However, the classical ECG abnormalities associated with ischemia are depression of the ST segment below the isoelectric line, this is the most common finding, or, as illustrated here, inversion of T waves in leads with dominant OR waves, loss of concordance. On occasion, ischemia manifests as a combination of both ST segment depression and T wave inversion. If such an episode of partial occlusion resolves with no infarct developing in the ischemic area, the patient is said to have suffered an episode of unstable angina. In some cases of partial obstruction, however, the loss of blood supply may be sufficient to progress to infarction in a limited region of the ischemic area. The susceptibility of the ventricular wall to this type of partial thickness infarction is not uniform. Again, the subendocardial region seems to be the most precarious in terms of blood supply. The ECG changes associated with infarction in this situation are identical to those of pure ischemia, with depression of the ST segment, T wave inversion, or both. Unlike infarction secondary to complete vessel occlusion, ST elevation is not observed on the ECG. Also, as much of the myocardial wall under the lead remains viable, and actively depolarizing, no window is created into the left ventricular cavity, so pathological Q waves do not develop. This is a non-ST elevation MI. As the ECG changes of unstable angina and non-ST elevation MI are identical, the two entities cannot be distinguished based purely on the analysis of the ECG you need a second test to separate the two. As myocardial muscle dies, it releases cardiac markers such as cardiac troponin into the bloodstream. Therefore, if the patient develops elevated levels of cardiac markers in the blood in association with the ECG changes we've described, they are said to have had a non-ST elevation MI. If the blood levels remain normal, they have pure ischemia unstable angina. Unstable angina and non-ST elevation MI are grouped together under the general term non-ST elevation acute coronary syndromes. The mechanism generating ST depression and T wave inversion in patients with unstable angina and non-ST elevation MI are poorly understood. They may relate to abnormal electrical events at the margins between ischemic and adjacent normal regions of myocardium. Perhaps for this reason, and in marked contrast to ST elevation MI, the distribution of the ECG changes among the leads correlates poorly with the vessel obstructed. The ECG shown here from a patient with typical chest pain demonstrates T wave inversion which is certainly consistent with myocardial ischemia. However, we cannot deduce which coronary vessel is involved. So, 
We've seen that in ST elevation MI, untreated complete arterial occlusion may progress to infarction of the full thickness of the affected myocardial wall. This may be associated with the development of pathological Q waves in the leads overlying the dead muscle. In contrast, partial occlusion may progress to localized infarction, the process tending to focus on the subendocardium. This situation is characterized by depression of the ST segment and or T wave inversion. Q waves do not generally develop. Because of these associations between ECG abnormalities and pathological findings, you may see these differing situations referred to as Q wave MI, full thickness infarction or transmural infarction, or in the case of non ST elevation MI, non Q wave infarction partial thickness or subendocardial infarction. While these designations do have meaning in the presence of further supporting evidence such as echo or cardiac MRI, the anatomical and pathophysiological correlations they imply are far from perfect and the terms should not be used interchangeably. At the present time, when dealing with suspected acute coronary syndrome, the key is the initial diagnosis, followed by accurate identification of the presence or otherwise of significant ST elevation. The latter is the prime determinant of the appropriate treatment pathway. <laughs>